Hi, I'm Steve Mascari. If you've seen my film on using a rip fence, you'll know why I prefer a short one like this. It allows me to have plenty of clearance as soon as the cut is complete, and that reduces the risk of kickback. And by having this narrow lip on it here, it means I've got room to get a push stick in there, even when I'm machining quite narrow stock. But there does come a point when I'm machining very narrow stock where even this isn't sufficient. By very narrow, I mean maybe just a few millimetres, such as I might want if I'm cutting laminates for a curved chair leg, for example. In that situation, I much rather have the thin piece on the outside of the saw blade where it can fall away harmlessly. That leaves me with the waist between the blade and the rip fence. And because it's a bigger piece of wood, I've got much better control over that with my push stick. I have a setting gauge which enables me to ensure that all those laminates are the same thickness. I set it to 5mm and then just put it in the track of my saw table. I can then put my workpiece up against the setting gauge and the fence goes up against the stock that I'm going to use. I can then remove the jig. I do need to set the rip fence so that it finishes just slightly forward of the last cutting tooth. Lock that off and then use my feather board to apply pressure just in front of the blade. And now I'm ready to make the cut. As you can see, no risk of kickback and an accurately sized laminate. The first step in making this is to route a groove for the scale. You can use a steel rule, a plastic ruler, or as I'm doing here, the scrap end of a sticky scale which I used for my circular saw setting jig. The head is just fabricated from some scraps, in this case of maple, and the arm itself acts as a spacer while clamping, but don't forget to remove it before any glue squeeze out sets it all rock solid. The head will be trimmed to size once it's all glued together. The clamping bar has a nut pulled in underneath, and there is a bigger, shallow hole to take a plastic pressure pad. This prevents the screw from chewing up the scale. The cursor is perspex and the elongated holes allow me to fine tune the accuracy which may be necessary if I change the blade in the future to one with a different kerf. It must be mounted scratch side down. So now I've got my jig, I've glued a block at this end on the underside of the arm so that it's level with the head of the jig over here and I've glued a piece on the bottom so it will slide in the mitre slot of the table saw and I've set it so that it reads exactly zero. Now it might read zero but of course it's not set to zero so I'm going to trim it off at the saw using some support with this push block and then it will both read zero and it will actually be zero millimeters away from the saw blade. So unlock the saw, lower the guard, nearly forgot, there we go. Start the saw and away we go.
this setting gauge is now ready to use. So if I want to cut off 5mm strips from the, this workpiece, I can set it to 5mm, like that. And put it in the track. And then I put my workpiece up to the setting gauge and the fence up to the workpiece. Now I'm pulling the fence towards me so that when I lock it off it doesn't suddenly kick over. It stays nice and square. There we go. Any play? No play at all. That's just perfect. Get rid of the setting gauge for a moment. So now I'm ready to make my cut. Not quite. I need a feather board. There we go. Put that there. And away we go. Now I set that to five millimeters and that measures five millimeters. Absolutely perfect. And to cut in some more, I simply repeat the process. Put the setting jig back in. Move that for a moment. Put the setting jig back in. Stock up to the setting jig. Remove the setting jig. Well, if you'd like to make that up for yourself, you can go to my website www.workshopessentials.com and you can download for free plans to make it that you can print off on your computer and take into the workshop. And if you want any more of my ideas, I've got two DVDs brim full of them. Workshop Essentials Jigs and Accessories. There are two volumes and up until between now and Christmas 2007 they're very heavily discounted on special offer. So there's no excuse for every woodworker in the world not having this in their stocking on Christmas morning. Thanks for watching, stay safe at your table saw and have fun in your workshop. Cheerio!